also known as Thirsty Thursday, where Google Educator, a group of educators from around the world are thirsty for knowledge. Hello, everybody. We got uh, James. Yep, yeah, everybody. Nice got to see you, everybody. Here we go. Oh, he's got the G cup. Yeah, well, then, uh, showing off, showing off. Ralph and uh, Gary. Ralph for next time. Yeah, yeah. People on the left side of the screen are showing off their Google gear. <laughs> Gary is rocking his innovator hat. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going completely unbranded today. And the topic, yeah, the topic is technophobia slash resistance. Oops, resistance to tech. I'm going to fix that. Resistance to tech. We do not resist <laughs> teaching. I uh, don't know. I think that's a good title. <laughs> yeah, resistance, resistance to tech. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a totally different, that's a topic for another week. Okay, so yeah. resistance to tech. Um, and, um, well, I'm going to ask a question that I don't know if everybody's going to have an answer to, but this is something that I've been wondering. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when have you experienced a fear of tech and or a resistance to tech? Like if you, if you can even remember um, a time when you experienced that. Hmm. Uh, just, I'm shooting out right away. Uh, a couple, uh, two weeks ago, uh, students said that uh, their drama teacher does not want to use Grammarly because mm -hmm. they just siphon off your personal information and everything you type. Mm, interesting. So there's a easy fear going around. And, and that's perfectly legit because of the way sure. it works. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, it is lit. You should never use Grammarly for anything highly confidential. Uh, and so I've, heard stories, I've heard stories of governments putting stuff in and Grammarly. Well, they are, you know, an organization and they may have links to say the CIA or something. So yeah. Grammarly, uh, Grammarly retains the, the 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 content of your stuff, or, or what? if I if I were, I don't know what the policy is, but they do. You do send it to them, so it's true. So you expose it to them. So then, you yeah. know, it, a, an unscrupulous person could take advantage of that. That's what. So it's yeah. exposed in that sense. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 So you know, that's funny because because it's like uh, so it's not really in that case it's not resistance to tech in general, but the security. Uh, concern. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say that's a phobia. I'd say that's legit, right? Well, yeah. So that's resistance to tech. Because sometimes well, you know, technophobia is it, it, technophobia sounds irrational, but there's some rational resistance. As well. I guess that if if you are a student and it uh, were to help you with your writing, and at some mm -hmm. point I do mm -hmm. believe that if you use Grammarly wisely, like you use a dictionary wisely, sure. um, it can actually help you with your writing and. Mm -hmm. um, then if you think that your um, paragraph about uh, the Wright brothers will uh, jeopardize national security, then it is a phobia because it's a non-rational phobia. Yeah. Which hinders you to use it. I mean, if it's non-confidential material that you're putting in, then, uh, you know, you're going to have to do it. It's the same with Google, Apple, the rest of the gang. Is sure. that if you're storing yeah. your data with them, um, I personally don't have anything that exciting to hide. But if I did have the latest intellectual property that's going to make me a million billion pounds, I wouldn't probably be storing it on. I have to delete some stuff right now. Excuse me, I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, get, get, get to it, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I feel like it's it's a matter of, I mean, I guess if, if I feel like Grammarly would be spending a lot of money and a lot of server space if they were going to be retaining the, the massive amounts of material that are out there. I think mm. that that part seems really unlikely. So let's say that that's true. Then I, the, I don't think the exposure they're is very <laughs> short term. Yeah, the exposure they is very short term. Probably, unlike Google, unlike Google yeah. where, you know, you, you know, it takes, this is, it, the company has to have integrity, you know, yeah. so it's, you decide, am I going to trust this company or, or am I not? Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's an issue to, to I mean, to I think if, if you were this devious company doing this, mm -hmm. for instance, right. I'm not, we're not saying in any way Grammarly are, but right. obviously you would only retain the stuff from the addresses that look interesting. But so, see, I feel like you'd have to build, uh, you'd have to build something to save that stuff. I mean, it's so, it's like uh, you, yeah. you'd have to devote time. You'd have to have to, some servers. But Grammarly yeah. do have mm -hmm. servers. And if you were building that particular spy network, you would build it in. And it would siphon off the stuff that's interesting. Right, right. So it's like you, you were talking about rogue uh, rogue talent um, yeah. that, that would be doing something on there. That, yeah, that's a, that's an issue. You know, it's really hard to argue with the legitimacy of that because every business is run, is, is a, 
employs humans. Yeah. So far. Yeah. Uh, and so that's, it's, it's hard to say that somebody's completely off their rocker if that's a reason for resisting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So then, then you have to think about ways to do things that don't involve sharing. Well, mm -hmm. like you say, you, you've got a spectrum of privacy. You're willing to share things that aren't past a certain line. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, well, I think that's probably the same. Thing. I, yeah. I would, um, not want to leave out Gary here and what his experience are mm. with Grammarly. Yeah, you raised your hand. Yeah. Gary, what's up? Like, what, what were you thinking? Well, uh, with, uh, in the Philippines, they're very conservative, mm -hmm. even though they have all the technology, they have resistance to technology because they don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. um, for example, when I was pushing Google, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, they are so scared that what if we make use of Google Forms for enrollment? And mm -hmm. th this was the questions they posted to me. Mm -hmm. What if we use mm -hmm. Google Forms? Because I was suggesting, why don't we computerize mm -hmm. the enrollment system? Since we always, every year, we ask for, for students Same. To fill out a form in paper, and uh, oh. there, there are a lot of data to be to be encoded, uh, to be written on the paper, and that is mm -hmm. for the reg registration alone. So I made a form wherein you can, the parent can just simply fill it out, and mm -hmm. then, for example, the 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 accounting office needs the name and the ID. That's it, mm -hmm. and then they will get the spreadsheet of of mm -hmm. it. But the question of the MIS to, MIS office to me was. How sure are you that the 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 data mm -hmm. from uh, the data is protected? How mm -hmm. safe is that? I mm -hmm. told them there are several ways we can protect the the information given to us mm -hmm. by by parents using Google Forms. Mm -hmm. But what if and another question that they posted was, now it is free, but what? How about in the future? Will it be free? Because I told them it's free. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of questions because there mm -hmm. are they are not really into technology, yeah. And I think they don't know much about technology. Mm -hmm. That oh, is so a very good point. Yeah, that's very a second point. really good reason. So one's like a valid, yeah. valid security concern, and then also you know yeah. dependency, dependency. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, I was looking recently because uh, the originality reports that Google recently made off uh, available in Google Classroom. I mean, at first it sounded like everybody's, oh my gosh, we can use these originality reports. Everybody yeah. can just yeah. cancel, but turn it in. But they, then they have a limit, right? And then then that you can do three per classroom. And then if you want more, then you have to upgrade to the Google uh, G, G Suite uh, for Enterprise, like another level of G Suite for Enterprise. Yeah. Well, and you do they, yeah? they have said that from the very beginning, you uh -huh. subscribe to the beta program. They let mm -hmm. you know that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I am 100% positive that the basic uh, G Suite for Education, um, by the way, I, uh, mm -hmm. is completely free and stays free. Exactly. And there's, yeah. there's, yeah. Still, there's still some misconception. Even at Google Summits, there are people mm -hmm. joining who think that the school has to pay quite a lot of oh, money no. to get these no, accounts. Yeah. And yeah, obviously, we as a school are getting this for free. Right. And uh, even if Google is engaged in big data, I wonder what the Wright brothers um, essay will really give them insight on. However, mm -hmm. many, many uh, uh, feel that Google is actually trying to pull data from schools. But mm -hmm. what I have heard from, I don't know who it was, but a Googler um, at a conference is that they want to um, rather uh, show students how useful their tools are. So later they will hopefully, when they are deciders, yeah, that makes they sense. Decide yeah, for, yeah. for enterprise. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. you know, have people will just be used to reaching for these tools. I sure am. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if I if I went somewhere else, if I weren't a teacher, I would still be like, oh, I need to do a document. Why wouldn't I use Google Docs? It's so convenient. Yeah. In fact, when my wife sets up a tuition business, even though it wasn't free, mm -hmm. um, that they, they use Google Docs. Yeah, you know, um, because that's what the kids are used to now, and they mm -hmm. are going out into the workplace, and they will use Google, which is also yeah. why Microsoft Office, for the most part, is largely free now. Mm, gotcha. uh, their yeah. licensing is a little bit more complicated, but 
most teach te most teachers and students can get a free or very cheap yeah version and, and uh, well. live live microsoft live is uh -huh. free isn't it so that was so, yeah. Subject, yeah i just yeah. want to point out though uh you know that right now they have like another layer of google for enterprise that's the costs per student mm. but right there where they talk about it they say that don't worry google for education is free and will always remain free mm. so they're adding an extra level of service so you can get unlimited originality reports and who knows what other kind of great things are going to add to that for yeah. a cost but but mm. the basic service which is really not very basic it's really helpful mm. is, yeah. is always going to be free and that's, that's and, and the, it has been free for a decade exactly yeah, yeah. so but that's one of the that we can knock off yeah yeah, yeah it's a long time already it's pretty mm. it is a long time it really is uh, classroom uh, is only five years old so yeah, the, the really basics are not even the basic <laughs> right the basic features yeah. you can you can even call it basic because it's very useful it's very mm. very very nice it's so mm -hmm. it's advanced for me it's not yeah. just basic <laughs> yeah but I, I, do, I do think it's legit because i've seen various quizzing tools start mm -hmm. off free get you hooked on or even mm -hmm. some of the extensions available in in, in sheets yeah. and things they start sure. off free they get you in and then they start charging and the prices go up and up um i'm not going to name names but uh you know I can name Zaption, for instance, because it's gone under because it didn't mm. quite pull it off. But it, it shows that, yeah, you, you give people a bit of sugar, you get them hooked, and then uh, you start charging through the reef for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's too common in this industry. Mm. Well, so, so, uh, you you mentioned some, some really good reasons that, that people, uh, other people have, uh, have resisted tech. But have you ever, uh, have you ever, and it's okay, if the answer is no, just say so, but have you ever, do you remember experiencing a fear of tech? Uh, intimidation, um, resistance to, yes, yes, Gary. Uh, I went I went to Singapore last, uh, not with, not specifically with the computers, but uh -huh. uh, when I went to Singapore last month, uh, with the immigration, well, uh, it's not, any more human contact but oh. you just have to put the passport on the machine oh, you have yeah. to <laughs> yeah. I, I am not just used to this new system mm. <laughs> basically because i was yeah. looking for everything I, i'm looking for someone to talk to usually mm. in yeah. the airport but now it's all high tech <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah there was something kind of intimidated <laughs> My, yeah, my friend and I uh, were we had some time in the airport, and we were going to sign up for that kind of uh, thing for getting smoothly back into Korea, and yeah. uh, and so we walked in. We were in the airport in Korea, but we were going to arrange to make it easier when it came back. Mm -hmm. We walked into the office that was for that, and we're 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 not even fully in the room. We're just walking down the hall, and the woman has already started talking to us. She's anticipated. This is I'm sure this is like we're some kind of. Uh, hallucination or something, but mm -hmm. she she was she was telling us, oh no no you were here in October like like as if she'd identified us before we even got in the room. <laughs> so, I don't know if they were using pupil distance technology or it's it's, it's probably but maybe she just was like had the same answer like every time she looked up somebody who walked in the room then yeah. it'd be the same answer. But it was really weird because we were both signed up already. And we, we were just verifying, and, and so she was right, and it was pretty creepy. Well, <laughs> uh, a good example, when I personally got a bit um, scared mm -hmm. or very weary about uh, my freedom of uh, movement, mm -hmm. and there is this law in Thailand that um, wherever you stay, uh -huh. in a hotel or in mm -hmm. any private house or whatever, in 24 hours time, the house owner or the hotel owner has to notify that you are staying at uh, mm -hmm. this address, mm -hmm. yeah. which, which, uh, which is just uh, kind of big brother. Yeah, I feel a bit <laughs> like okay. The Thai government knows to every moment, every day, they know where I'm staying, mm -hmm. and uh, usually I'm I'm not. Uh, breaking any laws and I'm okay with that, but still it's this, um, for, for, first of all, there is a hassle to it. You know, you mm. have to have fill your land on a uh, landlord or the hotel management has to, has to fill up a form or which is 
it takes only three to five minutes if you have done it before. But, um, and then I talked to a hotel owner and he told me that um, actually um, there are moments where this is helpful for people who get lost here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I was so annoyed doing these forums and, and I, mm. I had a quite uh, difficult discussion with my landowner because he just didn't know about it and he didn't want to do it. He couldn't be bothered. Yeah. But um, there are some benefits to it. But still, I don't necessarily and am, am a fan of uh, the, some government knowing to any day where I am. That yeah. Is, uh, yeah, I can see why. Even if you were on board with it intellectually, emotionally, that the kind of thing is hard, hard to deal with. I just, for myself, um, I, I remember, you know, when I was young, then I used to, you know, use some of the earlier uh, PCs, and but I wasn't. I mean, I was learning really basic stuff. But then there was a long period of time when I didn't touch any of that for many years. And my brother, uh, I saw him for the first time in a long time, and he had some game that he oh. was using. And it was on a PC, and he had to to go into DOS to execute something mm -hmm. to run the game. And I thought that was really intimidating. I did not know what he was typing, um, mm -hmm. but the the thing was that that hurdle stood between me and that game. And yeah. So there was something that wasn't just like a. Um, you know, an abstract uh, tree. Oh, this cool thing. It was something that I really wanted. Nobody like was trying to tell yeah. me I wanted that. And I was willing to learn a, what seemed mm -hmm. at first like a random string yes. of characters. And that, well, you know, something the first thing it did was make me, gave me some, what you were saying, uh, talking about earlier, James, it was like um, low stakes exposure to yes. the tech. Um, yeah. I, you know, if I didn't, if it didn't work, well, I just didn't get to play that game. It was I, no think that, I think that is one of the, the things that, you know, we've talked about some really legitimate concerns right now, but yeah. one of the ways that we can reduce technophobia is this idea of low stakes. Basically, if it goes wrong, the consequences to that teacher or that person are nothing. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. think about Chromebooks, right? There's a reason all the admins love them because if they put silly software in, if they destroy the software, they just can wipe them out, start again almost immediately. Um, yeah. And that has reduced the stakes for admins, something wrong, because they're not worried about viruses, they're not worried about giving things out to the kids, because they know that the worst that can happen is they're going to have to wipe it again, which takes very little time. Yeah. Um, and in most <laughs> cases, they're not really storing much on the computer anyway. Well, uh, Good idea. Sorry, Eric. Good idea. It's a it's a good suggestion by James. Dwayne. Yeah. if you have nothing to worry when you use Chromebooks, mm, yeah, mm. just wash it out and then it's already there. It's yeah, like not literally wash it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just want to point out that we've been ignoring uh, Sethi in the uh, private uh, in the uh, the chat for the viewers. Uh, let uh, me see. Flip classroom tutorials. Sethi says. Uh, well, the Gary Gary is still wearing the Nubler look. What is Nubler? <laughs> what is that? Some kind uh, of newbie, newbie, Googler. newbie Googler? Newbie Googler, yeah. Nice. Uh, nice. Google, a newbie <laughs> Googler. Okay. So, so uh, yes. Seti yeah, right. also says that he can't wait until all airport are personal free. Yeah. And, um, yeah. The, the, the big point, which is, uh, is it a moral fundamental discussion point is, uh, people keep saying, well, if you don't have anything to hide, what's the problem? And I completely agree to that. However, we don't know what will be outlawed in the future. And it might be outlawed to drink from a cup which is not see-through, so you can't see what's in there. And mm -hmm. now I would be breaking the law. So yeah. uh, that's a silly example. But um, in, in rather unfree countries, uh, uh, homosexuality is still outlawed. So, you know, mm. uh, I, I, I'm right here in one. Oh, yeah. What's that? Uh, What's that again? Oh, same, same there. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Legal, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a horrible thing, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's rather, yeah. So I just, I don't know what, uh, like, did you, I don't know if there's any concerns about talking. What What's the concern about talking about that, James? Um, 
from there? Is that an issue? Well, like a, I mean, I mean, all I will say is that it is illegal, and obviously, yeah. I personally respect the law. Um, right. But you know, I also understand that there there are many other people who are, you know, in, not in a great position, and actually, it's one of the reasons why some Malaysians move north to Thailand. Yeah. Well, but those who can afford to move, not everybody can move, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just challenging, so, isn't it? So the that's a, is very moderate. That's a moral thing here. Um, yes, at the moment now, I don't own any illegal data or I do not behave illegally in any way. But um, if I'm a full uh, glass citizen, yeah. in what way will laws change? Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, will I be still be able to be a good citizen? Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Yeah, if the, the definition could change, and if you have no privacy, then then you're you're just completely vulnerable to whatever the, the definition is, depending on who's in power. Which yeah, and I think the other problem is place. that governments largely can't be trusted with data. I mean, we've heard um, so many leaks and problems where governments have shown time and time again, and it's in part because there could be corrupt people within the government, um, or they will be hacked. Or they can be hacked or they can't store it securely. In fact, I've been running a UN day today and we were playing with the year 12s and, uh, you know, we were talking about data security because it was what was on the thing and none of the students could come up with a solution that was wholly secure or even secure sure. enough that I would trust them with this very so-called sensitive data. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I played it to the max and told them it was the data of a black hole. Um, but the key point is that none of the students could come up with something because, you know, they said, oh, well, uh, you know, things like uh, we'll get virus checking on it. Great idea. But uh, that means you need to be on the Internet. So already your virus, you, you've been compromised. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, also, it's always challenging. Yeah. Governments are also not very nimble. You know, when, yeah. when uh, security risks rise, then security defense has to rise as quickly and as nimbly, and, and yeah. governments don't change quickly. No. I mean, I'd much rather trust Google, Amazon, Microsoft, it's true. Uh, Apple, all of them would do, do much, much better job with our data. Sony even, you know, they, they all do a much better job of trying to protect our data. They're highly competent, and, yeah. and they do all have uh, our... For the most part, they have our data interests at heart, but they would outperform most governments. You know, I'm not saying all, but most governments, I would say. So, but don't worry, Thailand, because uh, Google actually have the old ISP as well. To bridge to our topic, it is yes. um, consciousness about points where your decision makes your life more secure. That's mm. a key point to reel in. I want to say um, people who are still scared of benefiting mm. from new technology, and that is, mm. I believe, how we can we can try to reach into people's minds to mm. um, to, to 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 get them on on our side. Mm. I mean, how many people are scared of Google Maps, and yet when they use the navigation uh, live navigation from Google Maps, you are actually much more so than the Thai government knowing where you are for the day. They know where That's you right. are at <laughs> every, every minute. Yeah. 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 Well, everybody with mobile phone, I'm sure if the government put their mind to it, they could drag you like a piece of cake. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, yeah. I, I mean, how do, people how do you that out without a second thought? How do you think that the traffic analysis works? How does Google know that there is a traffic uh, jam ahead because they have 50 or 60 phones at that one sure. point which are stuck. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I must agree that even though we are at the forefront for arguing for the technologies, we must also warn what we give up or yeah. what, what big data can can actually uh, do with Start us. To extract. Yeah. I mean, and, um, but then again, really and many technophobians would be happy to use a Pokemon, Pokemon Go, <laughs> where exactly uh, this data is is being siphoned off. Yeah, and also actually being a technophobe isn't isn't helping matters because you don't need to use the technology for them to be tracking you. For example, Tesco have excellent information on their people um, because of the loyalty cards and things, and 
you know all of that kind of stuff is doesn't require any use by the person who's 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 involved with it you know what i mean yeah you they, don't have they to be they swipe, but they they don't realize all the technology that's being used behind the scenes yeah, yeah. well any like discount card uh, all the payback cards they started yeah. out of getting to know the user yeah, yeah. that's it and the thing with with a pupil distance technology that can recognize yeah. people, I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's already um, common in China from what I understand. Yeah. And, uh, and it's being tested in other places. And, who, you know, who knows how, how mm. much that's, you know, the, the idea, the privacy is a thing of the past, uh, mm -hmm. Sethi mentioned, um, could be true, could be true. Yeah. That, yeah. It's like we have to, we have to find ways to protect ourselves from mm. each other. You know, like right mm. now, if I want to use the bank um, versus using the bank online in America, mm -hmm. where you sign into a site and you click on do whatever, then I have mm. to. Do you guys do you guys have like a secret card with secret numbers or something that generates a random number? Yeah. That out that's part of the process. I don't yeah. know if they're doing that in America now because I've been there in a while, but I have a feeling it's not that complicated there. Well, but there's they, uh, there's privacy to come, I think which yeah. gives you unlimited uh, credit card numbers and mm -hmm. you can even for each credit card you can uh, schedule how long it should be valid and how much you should uh, oh, wow. can be used wow. Privacy yeah. that's actually really okay. useful sadly yeah. enough that's yeah. only for american citizens oh uh, gotcha well it's like uh, i'm using like and there, there's there's i can't enter stuff using my own keyboard i have to enter stuff on a virtual keyboard and there are spaces, there are like uh, blocks that, so the shape of my keyboard is mm. different at different times. So it's amazingly hard for somebody to hack. Mm. But of course, on the other end, you know, my, my information's there. It's available for yeah. her, you know, the bank owns that. Uh, they, they, they have access to that information. But it may be that there's going to be technology that, that makes it possible on the other end. Maybe something to yeah. the effect of, of cryptocurrency where where everything's out in the open in a way that benefits people on both sides sure. uh, of a transaction. So it's possible that as we advance, we're going to find ways to protect ourselves from the companies that that uh, are also helping us. Who knows? Mm. That the companies themselves might develop and use that technology. Mm. I think Just we have kind of strayed a long way from the original topic. No, we have. Yeah, we we're trying to deal we with might, um, might might go back in a little bit further. Yeah, we're trying Talking to talk about technophobes. Should we uh -huh. move on to to one of the approaches we saw? Um, I might share my screen for this one. Sure. Uh, hang on a minute. Yeah. Okay. I'm just. Uh, I, I know what I'm doing. Honest. Yeah, I believe you. Okay. Yeah, you, you believe me. So, um, this 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 picture here shows uh, the three carriage model, which was famous by a YouTube video. And mm -hmm. the idea is, I think we can agree that we're probably all in this first carriage here. Uh -huh. yeah. And what does that represent? Yeah, that please represents explain. the people. That represents the people. people. Yeah, that represents the people that are going ahead that will use the technology anyway. Don't really need any help. Gotcha. Um, the second are the people who they're given some benefits. They're told that it's going to be useful. They'll go along for the ride. And then the third are the laggards who are very resistive. Um, and every tech coach everywhere always gets told concentrate on this second lot. Okay. Yeah. Because these are the ones who you can bring along for the ride, so long as you explain the benefits, so long as you um, get rid of the the obvious concerns and give people the time. Yeah, and also pioneer it. You know, as long as yeah. you like, this is the the first group is the the uh, beta testers the and then yeah. the early adopters. Yeah, that's right. I heard I heard I heard this uh, uh, this visual from. Davis Appas. He's the one who introduced me to that one. Yeah. So yeah. because I was having a problem convincing people from my previous school, and he mm -hmm. he showed me that video, and it's very yeah. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's a nice model, and it, it is one that is great for tech coaches to think about who who are the people I should be concentrating on, and yeah. how can I provide the most effective support for various people. Yeah. yeah. So Gary, I'm curious, how did it eventually go with your earlier school? Did did they stay low tech or not? Uh, they are very traditional. They hired a programmer where mm -hmm. in every time they will call the programmer, they have to pay the programmer. Mm -hmm. I know that why don't you empower the, the the employees of the school? Why don't you empower them? Because we have the technology. So they mm -hmm. remain that way. 
okay. unfortunately. Mm. And the thing is, programming time is, is very expensive. And, yes. you know, if you can um, buy tools that, that, that help you, then, then obviously you want to do that. Mm. I mean, there's, there's always pros and cons, but if it were up to me, and it were my database in my school, I would try to get it in-house and get those programmers in-house yes, because yes. they can provide a massive amount of support for you when you get to a certain scale. Mm, if you're a small yeah. school, then frankly, stick to spreadsheets. You don't need anything else. Yes. I reckon, for example, I, my, my figuring is about 500 pupils. Mm. Yeah. In, for example, in my school, we always need to have, at the end of the school year, mm -hmm. we need to produce uh, a report wherein all students would, with the high... With the high grades, mm -hmm. I told them why why do we have to submit as teachers when we have encoded the grades of the students mm -hmm. in the computer? So all yeah. they need to do, or all, all the registrar's office need to do, is to sort or filter them. Yeah. And when I talked to the registrar, they she told me that uh, we don't have access to that. So I I asked them <laughs> why not? It's a simple filtering. Yeah. And they can't do that, and they have to call the programmer. Okay, yeah. so I, I told the president of the school, why don't we empower them? Why don't we empower yeah. the registrar's office? Why do we have to call the programmer every time we need something to, yeah. to uh, yeah. any any report that we need to produce? It's mm. very there's simple. The, there's a fear of looking stupid, yeah? Many, many people worry about admitting that they don't know how to do that. And mm. some tech integrators, as I myself, especially with my mom, um, sometimes don't find the right uh, patience and the right comforting voice, uh, voice mm -hmm. and words to, to to make them approach me with questions again. My mm -hmm. mom usually knows that I'm uh, not uh, that arrogant and have just uh, maybe <laughs> a, a weak moment, but she keeps asking me. So I'm very happy that she does, and I'm very happy for her progress. And so the registrar offices, you know how how to approach them with respect and and uh, yeah. dignity and that's it might also be that that program has deliberately locked down that database so that he gets that 50 dollars or whatever yeah. it is that's true you know, yeah. uh, you know uh, it sounds like that program is onto a pretty sweet deal yeah i'll <laughs> say yeah as long as they know how to generate reports they, they got themselves a real nice uh, uh I, 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 power it was certainly a thing in the 80s and the 90s that you know these these programmers yeah. make a database then charge you for every last little thing mm -hmm. um often they'd do the initial work quite cheaply but uh, they, they knew once they got you hooked onto it um, oh, oh, but i think is... i think if you go back somebody's uh, explained it in the youtube channel about a particular program that uh, the the pricing per view uh yes Flips Classroom Tutorials mentions a, a particular tool that uh, they, they get you get get you started, give you a thousand views, and then they charge you lots for the next two, three, four thousand views. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you please uh, disclose what tool that was? Uh, it, it's actually on the. It's a Flips Classroom Tutorials says, look at the pricing of awesome tables and what happened there. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was I just like, have you used that it's so nice very nice but uh, yeah <laughs> you get the first thousand you see, and then after that it gets real expensive um i also meant uh, saw that some ex uh, sheet helpers yeah there are many many mm. little uh, scripts which help you to combine sure. or separate uh, cells mm. which you can easily do with code but it's just more practical to click buttons and yeah. you, you just um, say which separating key uh, you take and you can do that 100 times and then mm. you have to wait a day or even wait a week until mm. you get more and more and more attempts. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's not bad to mention uh, uh, just uh, yet another mail merge. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yam. Mm -hmm. Yam. Or yeah. um, they give you, I believe, is it 50 or 100? Um, uh, just initially 50 and then up okay. to 400 max. well I, I would say there is another alternative formula that is completely free oh, yeah mm -hmm. or autocrat autocrat is completely oh, autocrat. Free. Oh, yeah, autocrat, yeah. autocrat is a bit more complicated but does a lot more autocrat yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. i use formula so, to make it faster but simpler autocrat yeah. when i want to do things uh, like certificates and things like that 
Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, complexity is a big issue with resistance to tech. I mean, because yeah. that can just, people can see something, they can even mm. want it, but mm. that, that, that complexity can sometimes be enough to, to prevent them. Um, yeah, they, it's just a little too hard to tackle and they feel like, yeah. what do they do if something goes wrong and they can't yeah. figure it out? So that can really be an issue. I mean, I, I have to admit, I'm normally not a technophobe at all, mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to video editing, I always go to Camtasia. Yeah. Um, it's a very good tool. It's an excellent yes. tool. Um, it's a brilliant it's screencasting tool. Yeah. But because I've now learned the interface, uh -huh. yeah. I don't you know. really want to go to Final Cut Pro or to one of the other Adobe Premiere, even though I have both. Yeah. Because that's a not big learning curve. Yeah, totally. That um, that reminds me the the, the whole um, aspect of unfamiliarity. There was uh, something. Um, I'm not sure how to do this. I want to show my own. Screen. Uh, you can even just press it. Share screen. Well, I can share screen, but then, yeah. just then do, what, how do I? It, it'll just appear as another screen. Okay, but what if I want to? Um, yeah, screen share because I want to share screen on one. Here, I'm going to say share screen, and then. Your entire screen, right? Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, and, so uh, that you'll probably appear as the and double then double. you have to select yeah. yourself. And then, so this is what um, Sethi Flip Classroom Tutorials yeah. mentioned about the technology adoption life cycle. Yeah, which um, this is interesting. I was looking up this thing about <laughs> oh, the chasm. The chasm. So <laughs> innovators, early adopters, were right here in the middle. There's this chasm, and, and what mm. that represents is the fact that the uh, people are out looking for something. Mm. Exciting to do, their needs are different than those of earlier adopters. It's like yeah. it has to be there's it has to have some level of usefulness um, mm. that that works for them. Yeah. It's not just the the novelty factor. Yeah, um, and so a lot of good products that maybe they can't recognize the use of it yet, mm. but the products would not make it across the chasm. Mm. I mean, if you look at uh, Google Earth, I mean, yeah. Even now, I, I, I think it's got a limited use, but you know, it is a toy. US study guide. AD stands for Anno Domini, which is Latin for Year of Our Lord. So yeah, it is it is a bit of a toy that. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are so many great tools out there which never lift up completely. Yeah. But um, um, can can Eric? It's is it is it okay if you walk me again through that uh, big alley or uh, of chasm? I don't. I didn't get it. So but yeah. it, it's when the novelty wears off. Okay. So um, let me see. Why is the chasm? I'm gonna. So I'm just gonna um, show something about like one one focus that I read about was embracing change. Like some some mm. early adopters don't embrace change, um, and also. Uh, it takes time to perfect a product, and, yeah. and if you're if you if it's not perfected yet, then they might just avoid it. Um, let me see. Early adopters might be okay with a beta or a prototype. They they can put up with a lot of stuff. The kind of things that are typical of an early product: bugs, missing mm. features, restricted functionality, because they see what's cool about it. But you know, I mean, there's some people like I was talking to a guy who said that aesthetics don't matter at all in a product. He's like, mm. does it? What I want, and I'm like, great for you because aesthetics matter a lot, and and if people don't feel comfortable with it, if the interface looks confusing, then it doesn't matter what it does, and so uh, if there if it's buggy, then that can be uh, you know putting off off putting, and and uh, if it's if it's got some really great functionality, but you don't get it when you just look at it, then. Mm -hmm then that's enough to keep you from adopting it. And that can be very discouraging. And also depending on how much the company's investing, it can be enough to, to make them go down before they can, can really cross that, the gap. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I mean, if the user interface is intimidating, I mean, you look at something yeah. like uh, Unity or um, any of the programming packages or mm -hmm. any of the Adobe software, I mean, they're designed for professionals. There's a big learning curve to use them. That's um, true. True. Which is why Adobe have their simpler editions and their consumer editions and things like that, because they know that step is massive. Yeah. Um, and until you're comfortable with those tools, um, then you're not going to want that, even though it's full fat, full featured, got mm -hmm. everything you could want, um, you're, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to touch it. You know, lots yeah. of people use the, you know, the simple Adobe apps on their phones 
But if they got the full Photoshop or the full Adobe Premiere, they're going to be uh, feeling pretty tough about it because it is, they, they are intimidating interfaces for professionals. Um, and as I say, I can, I can see that a lot with, with, with these things. Um, the more buttons, the more complicated you make things, less people want to use it. Yeah. So there was something we were talking about earlier, James, um, this idea that sometimes resistance to tech is simply a uh, resistance to change in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that ironically for a teacher, sometimes yeah. even teachers are unwilling to learn, unwilling to learn yeah. something new. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I think, I think one of the big problems is that sometimes, um, senior leadership coaches, etc. um, don't explain the real benefits of doing what the new thing. And sometimes those benefits aren't for the teacher. And that's the worst scenario mm. because there might be benefits for the senior leadership in terms of data or something right. else. But the teachers aren't actually receiving those benefits. And I think that's even worse. Yeah. Um, unless you can prove that the most teachers want what's good for the kids. So if you can't prove that there's a, a benefit to the children directly, um, yeah. or it is actually going to make the teacher's life easier, then you're going to have a real uphill struggle to, to prove anything really, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's, it's like, there's so much benefit to getting everybody on board, getting everybody. Yeah. So they're not thinking about their classroom. They're thinking about the school, you know, yeah. and the benefit for the school, because then something that helps the administrator, if, you know, if everybody's on the same page, then that helps the school and they yeah. want to because that helping the school helps everybody. Yeah, but it, unfortunately, uh, that explanation isn't, there's no what's in it for me. That's the classic marketing line, isn't it? Uh, what's in it for me as a teacher? And if you're gonna yeah. do something that benefits you as a, an admin or something, then you know if you're not explaining at least the benefits to that teacher or you know the time you're going to give them in, in, in and respect them for that then that's often where these tech projects go horribly wrong yeah uh, you know and, okay. and sometimes people pay a lot of money for these databases and so on and yeah they, they probably shouldn't have done yeah so so we've got a comment um as a school administrator and a former ed tech coordinator this issue has been huge throughout my career <laughs> Fair play, right. unwillingness, unwillingness to learn teachers unwillingness to learn which is yeah. again pretty ironic and uh, and i was i was saying oh it's funny because you know i mean we are urged to encourage students to have a growth mindset yeah. and, and that uh, sometimes teachers don't uh, have yes. a growth mindset yeah i could lose my job if there's a computer teaching for me Mm -hmm. yes well, you're gonna lose your job anyway mate so don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> no um, um obviously my handshaking shouldn't ridicule anybody but um <laughs> we will never run out of jobs uh, we really won't and and um even those jobs which can be um made much easier or which jobs might be disappearing in the future there are so many jobs which have disappeared and usually people with a bit of uh, help can find uh, jobs which are benefiting uh, them on a higher level of of um of the pi uh, hierarchy of needs yeah I, th I think i think ralph anyway I, I th teachers can relax because the bottom line is that teachers jobs are not lecturing they're not delivering material because if that was the case tv would have replaced us in the 80s that's true. our jobs are about relationships yeah. uh, and our jobs are always going to be about relationships and until robots are so good that they substitute for people uh, and that's definitely not going to happen in our not for like two years 30, three years 30 30 40 50 years i would say yeah. uh, and also education don't make that much money so programmers are going to target us last yeah Trust me. you know yeah. um, uh, um i i don't know how many of you uh, know but um this friendly person um watching us now uh, ryan is uh, actually my uh, principal oh, really? and, oh yes <laughs> really and um it is very nice to say that um i believe that 
every principal should um, be able, like he is, to support their um, teachers and not yeah. be perceived as anybody who watches every move of them. Mm. So, and obviously that is a, a personal skill which is not necessarily found in all leaders, yeah. but uh, per default, we all know that, especially people who have attended the Innovator program, mm. um, that leading is not making uh, it your and whatever everybody does is your achievement, but um, empowering them. And yeah. yes, we are very happy with, with Vine because he does exactly that. I mean, what I do like about what Mr. Silverthorne, and can you pull this up on, on the thing? Um, yeah. As I moved up to a principal role, I have found teacher buying is essential because I think he's absolutely uh, got mm -hmm. it on the money there because if you plan the teacher buy-in, you plan those models, you work out who are likely to be your advocates, who are likely to have very reasonable objections. Because I think actually the critiques and the objections are, are really powerful because they do make you think. You want those guys on. Um, you want the people on there that are gonna say, yeah, I'll buy into this if you can prove the benefits. Well, and also sometimes it's about uh, coming at it with, with an approach of how do we solve this problem and mm. like presenting the problem and not having an answer immediately. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, letting letting uh, people um, struggle and mm. letting people uh, fail. And sometimes they fail their way to the same place that you would have led them to anyway. Yeah. I remember um, I used to work at, at a summer camp one summer and uh, and there was a guy who, uh, it was just him and yeah. a camper, uh, his teenager, him and a camper, and he really wanted that mm. kid's help to get this canoe mm. off the top of a car. Mm. And But the kid wasn't really into it and he could tell the yeah. kid wasn't really into it. And so he just, he just started struggling with that canoe yeah. all by himself and yeah and, and he and he but he didn't tell him to do anything he didn't say you got to do this mm. um but he presented the problem he made the problem very clear mm. and uh, the student uh, not the student but the camper saw the problem and mm. eventually was like hey you want some help with that uh so it's yeah. like making the problem really clear instead of just saying hey here's a solution yeah and i think if you can if you can give people steps and hints, mm, that, yeah. that's a golden art, I think. Sarah Green's also got another comment here, isn't it? You also need to think long-term, yeah. These kind of big that's changes. True. That is true. Uh, and I, I can't emphasize that a new system, a new computing system, is it, it should take two to three years to, to implement properly. If it's a major change of technology, you're looking at least three, three years minimum. And I'd say after three years, you're probably using it okay. But um, well, a lot of ta uh, patience is needed by us uh, mm. uh, front runners, yeah, that we, we yeah. don't get annoyed. That's, uh, that's, true. We need to be patient I, I, with everybody. I, I, think, I think that's true. But also, you don't necessarily want the front runners leading the program. You want that some of that middle carriage mm -hmm. who are the actual people who are, who are actually leading it. I mean, if oh, Davis, I say, Davis uh, Appa's um, shout out to him. As always, uh, told me uh, it, it's it's very good for anybody in in tech leading positions to actually step away and mm -hmm. let 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 uh, let the teacher body mm. uh, experience uh, what they where they want to go. That's a mm -hmm. very interesting mm -hmm. uh, approach. I mean, one of the yeah. things I do a lot of in class is I get the students to demo because then I know my instructions are really clear. Mm, that's a really good and point. In the same way, if you teach a few of those middle carriage people how to do it, then you're fairly sure that they're going to do it in a way that's appropriate for the other teachers to some extent. Yeah, uh, I, I don't remember. I don't remember where I saw it. There was one um, situation I read about where uh, there was a hospital, and mm -hmm. it seemed like their perception was that that the hospital staff were going to be very resistant to change. Mm. They had a new computer mm. system that was yeah putting together information in a new way that they thought would yeah. be really useful, but they predicted they, that there would be resistance. Yes. And so instead of forcing on anyone um, or doing, you know, what, uh, what we're kind of seeing mm. uh, suggested, you know, as, a, as an issue of mm. like long-term, like building, investing sure. time and buy-in, they put this computer in, in a, an area where people had yeah. access to it. They taped a piece of paper over it and said, do not use <laughs> <Cool. laughs> and people uh, started to use it like they started to rely on it like lives were literally depending on it because uh, they were like oh my gosh and they were getting all the information they need 
that's not going to work all the time. But that uh, that was a very interesting technique. But if if your if your product or your thing is is, is so very useful, mm -hmm. getting a pilot out there, giving people a taste of it, that it's is true. often the way. Um, that's really true. You know, because um, then people see the benefits and they want to use it. I mean, how many people have had formal training? I, Ralph's going to love me for this one. How many mm -hmm. people have had formal training on Kahoot? Gotcha. And how has it spread around our schools like an infection? Yep. And by the way, I'm, good one, yeah. yeah, I'm a bit annoyed at Kahoot at the moment. I've moved over to quizzes because they've the adverts are getting really annoying now. Oh, they have Ad uh, adverts? Where? Yeah. In Kahoot. In, in the general presentation or when you select the... Uh, when I go in as a teacher, they're saying, please oh. upgrade the full version. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have noticed that uh, it always diverts you to that page, yeah. but you have to click just away from it. But you, as a, when, when the uh, students play in the classroom, there's no adverts mm. in there, is it? Mm. No, it's no, no. It's, it's still good. But as I say, I, I, I am starting to look, prefer quizzes largely. So, mm. but how... Um, sorry, quizzes... Yeah, it's. Uh, I'll, I'll put the spelling up. The spelling's yeah. a bit funny, so I'll send it to you. Can you see it, well, Eric? I, uh, I think is it, it is. in the. Let me see. I can put it up. Yeah, yeah I was going to. Okay, while, sure. it's, while oh you're yeah. typing, uh, based on my experience, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, when we, well, we have the what we call the president of the school, mm -hmm. uh, who is so conservative and was mm -hmm. replaced or when his when her term has ended she was replaced with a new president who is mm -hmm. so into technology mm -hmm. wherein i was able to move fast mm. but you know administrator change mm. so while this techie president is uh was while well, she's still the president we have moved a lot we mm. have we have invented a lot of mm. new things and we move forward with the with the use of mm -hmm. uh, educational technology. Mm -hmm. But then after after the after her term ends, mm -hmm. everything ends. Mm -hmm. Everything stops. Yeah. Everything is paused. So earlier we were we were discussing uh, it should be the middle the middle carriage who should yes. But if there's no blessing, if there's no go signal of the top management, we can't do anything. It's true. No, so it's it true. To come from Although, and then. I would say one thing is the biggest advocates you will ever get if you want to make a technological change are the students. And yes. if your class is more fun, better, that will fire the other teachers like nothing else. Okay, because let me If they keep saying, hey, in Mr. Abella's class, we do this, this, and this, teachers are like, oh, and you learn like that? You know what I mean? <laughs> that, yeah. that is. That is the way to get the laggards because yeah, yeah. that yeah. reminds me of FOMO. for teaching. FOMO, fear of missing out. If oh, yeah, right. I yeah. heard that the first time when the teacher is able to create homework, which is that engaging, that other students have FOMO to not do their homework. Oh wow! That Even way. though we are we are now coming to a point where homework is less valuable. Or style, even, yeah. But but I, still, I, that, I think I think the word homework is is less valued, but I think. That independent practice, however it's done, I think is it's still very important. Mm. You know, and I, I think that's another discussion for another day because I think we are coming towards the end of our time, aren't we? Yeah, what, there what we have a few minutes left. Yeah. Oh yeah. well, last week we we had going for two hours and. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure that's, that's, that's a very gentle hint. It's getting past my bedtime. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We got about seven minutes. We got about seven minutes. We can we can yeah. make it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to say is about Kahoot. Not that is really one special tool because it, it really took mm. over a lot of classrooms and the students. I mean, the faces you can produce with playing a Kahoot is just mm -hmm. awesome. But mm -hmm. uh, that is not easy to 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 make a tool which is uh, taking over that easily. No, I mean not with not with the servers and the amount of. Things they've got, but I have to say the three of them: quizzes, Quizlet, and Kahoot are all very, very good, um, and they all have huge banks of materials. And I think there's probably a few more these days. Then again, we can make our own quizzes with Google Forms. We can, but kids tend to say this more formally. So I think I think each of those tools has its place. I think Quizlet is brilliant for vocab. I just yes. Wanna... 
Okay, I just wanted to show this point by Ryan that, that uh, basically getting some teachers to really get go forward with some particular type mm. of thing, thing because that's not coming from above. That's buy-in, yeah. visualized, and people see that and say, okay, somebody's benefiting from this. And that I think even just a couple of people who are like really benefiting, mm. it doesn't even have to be the majority. If they're like, yeah. oh my gosh, that looks really cool, then that yeah. can make a big difference in the appeal of something. That's right, yeah. yeah. And, and if, if teachers have a good ex first experience with something, then that really helps. Mm -hmm. um, you're never, you're never going to do it right. Okay, I think we're about to wrap up then. Eric, are you going to wrap us up? Sure, sure. Um, so did you, did you see uh, Gary's comment there? Did you discuss this already, <laughs> Gary? Please. Okay, anyway, one, one, just one last comment. Sure, sure. Um, uh, I am teaching photography, the basic of photography, mm -hmm. and... Uh, movie making mm -hmm. and uh, of course I have to ask my students to bring a camera uh -huh. of course my students have their phones so I yeah. did not ask them to bring any extra gadget with them mm -hmm. like a video camera or a, an SLR mm -hmm. because my students said oh sir can we make use of our mobile phone I said yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I proceeded with my activity and then my coordinator asked me oh why are you allowing them to use mobile phones it's a mm -hmm. it's a policy of the school that you're not allowed. You're, they are not supposed to use mobile phones in school. Mm -hmm. I said, because uh, I'm teaching photography and they need a camera and yeah. they already have a mm -hmm. camera built in and in their mobile phones. Yeah. So she's told me that ask them to bring an SLR. I told her I don't want to give the SLR at the beginning of the of the school day, mm -hmm. since they have their camera. Why not let them use the camera? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't find it logical. I don't find mm. it practical too. Well, but that was the kind of persistence that I have. And the school life. isn't providing those DSLRs, is it? Mm, yes, they're not providing. Yeah. I think I think that's um, a big difference. Uh, two things yeah. to that. Um, at many schools, I have seen that you have to put a sign outside if you use the phones. Hmm. And I have always been at awe if teachers complain that. Um, they don't have a proper mechanism in place how to deal with uh, students who have used or who have to use their phone in class. In my class, what I think works perfectly well is the um, law is or the policy is or we have agreed to that they have to leave the phone flat on the table. So, you know, they don't can hide it away when <coughs> if they were to use a line or yeah. any other thing. But the other thing I wanted to say about photography is um, that is a very, uh, very funny thing there. Yes, yeah. the iPhone makes beautiful photos. Mm -hmm. And yes, iOS is a beautiful operating system. Mm. And but they don't let us experience the bad photos. We need to to create a, um, a correlation between aperture and shutter opening time. And mm -hmm. with the iPhone, I believe you do not have the uh, manual settings, do you? I don't want to say anything wrong. Um, I do on mine, but I'm on Android, so I have the Pro. Yes. Mode. Yes. So um, that is, that is something. I, I think. I think it might not be in the default app, but there, there definitely is an equivalent on iOS. Yes, you have an open um, camera in 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 uh, um, uh, Android, and you might I have think, it in iOS as I well. I think that's a very good way to get the students started towards DSLR in terms of. I mean, although so, but I have to this, say, since I've got this phone, I've not really needed anything else. Um, this, this example, uh, where where you you cut the user experience short mm -hmm. out of um, comfort, yeah? yeah, you don't need to understand much about photography. Sorry, that's what what Apple says. Just shoot away; photos will be great, great yeah. for the user, but. Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't not much it, learning for the users. Does, yeah, does it go along yeah. the way with uh, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach him how aperture and shutter speed works, and you feed him for life? <laughs> Mind you, I have to say most DSLRs <laughs> are also fully automated. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, <laughs> it's up to you how much control you want over that car. Okay, well, uh, it's good to see that there are apps which are manually. Uh, to yeah, be yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. Oh, so All no, right. Well, it's been a really great conversation. Um, I, I love this format. I, I gotta say, um, I learned so much and um, mind mind widening. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank everybody, for watching. Yeah. Thanks everybody who is watching. Thank you guys. Thank Good you night. to our Thank host. You. Thank you to our yeah. host. He did well. <laughs>
Okay, bye bye everybody. Bye everyone. Bye.